Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever time zone you're on. This is the day that the Lord has made. It's Thursday, so it's got to be thrilling. God bless you today, and we pray that the blessing of the Lord is upon your life today, and the joy of the Lord is your portion. We praise God for that. We're going to be in uh, Brawley, California this weekend. So uh, at the Four Square Church, uh, the Supernatural Church in Brawley, California. So uh, we'd love to have you come and be with us. Hi, Jen. God bless you. Hi, uh, Garcia. Hi, Christian. God bless you. Uh, we pray God's blessing upon you today. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll wait a little bit here and see some more folks get on here. Hi, J.J. Mart. God bless you. Tell your friends about these. If, if, if the, if the uh, ministry has been a blessing, share it with people. That would be awesome. And uh, if the, that's something that you'd like to do, that would be super. Hallelujah. Well, I want to share with you today that the Holy Spirit empowers us to bear behavioral fruit like Jesus. Now, the headline today is, do we look as good at home as we do on stage? Okay, I want to share this with you. It is not only an opera, uh, important uh, for us as we uh, uh, walk with God that we look good on the stage, but we also must look good when we get off the stage. And the only way that we can do that is we will be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God that our behavior, once we get off the stage, matches how we look or present ourselves on the stage. So it's very important that we do that. Paul uh, does this in such a, such a wonderful way in explaining this to the letter in the Galatians church that he urges us that we walk in the spirit and will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So that's why you and I must walk in the spirit. And as we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So unless we walk in the fruit of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, eventually, if we don't do that, it is going to render our platform ministry ineffective because of the character that will not be able to sustain our ministerial platform. Are you listening? Now, let's go to the Word of God here, and I'm going to give you some illustrations. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, and let us not be conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. Now, when I had my grandsons traveling with me, I told them, you may have a great ministry on the platform, but if you are rude to the waiter or waitress, then, I mean, that tints, darkens, uh, your ministry that's on the platform. So your great, I feel, this is my personal thing in ministering 53 years, I believe that we should be as spiritual on the platform as we are in the restaurant. I'll give you an illustration. I was with a group of people. This is harsh, so hang on. I was with a group of people and this lady was there, and she's yelling at the waiter in Spanish, and she's saying, Joven, basile, mas café! Joven, basile, mas tacos! And she's yelling at this guy. And I just had enough. And she was my translator. And I stopped her, and I said, Listen, if you continue to talk this way to this waiter, I'm going to get up, go on the other side of this restaurant, and you are paying for my meal. I'll not tolerate this. This is nuts. 
And I told her, and this gets a little rough now, I told her, I said, I can understand why you're not married. God loves your husband to be too much to bring him to you. And she was a tremendous interpreter. She was one of the best ones I had. Now, this happened a long time ago. You don't know who I'm talking about. But I'm telling you, it is so important. Then I taught my, my grandson, both of them, I said, when we are out eating and the pastor is paying for our meal, you ask the pastor, uh, what, uh, what do you like to order here? And, but the pastor doesn't know what, what we're doing. And that is, oh, I, I like this, you know, I like this. And, you know, and so we, we're not so much interested in what's he, what he's eating. We're much interested in what he's paying. And so if he pays for a meal that he usually buys around $12, then I tell my grandsons, that's the area we should buy. Maybe a dollar over, but in that area. So I don't want, I told my grandsons, I said, when the pastor is paying, and your grandfather, I don't want you to, to order shrimp and, and lobster and a T-bone steak at, at twenty seven fifty. Now, if the pastor orders that, and that's what he's buying, cool, then we can do that too. What I'm trying to say is, while we're on the pulpit area, while we're on the platform, our lifestyle needs to match our, our, our way that we are, are when we're away from the platform. Now, I'm going to tell you very, very, my, my biggest thing that I have to be careful is when people are driving. I have to say, Jesus, keep me sweet, keep me sweet, because people are, are rude, and they're not nice. And I'm saying, Jesus, please help me, you know? And so that's where I have to be careful that I don't get my German temper going because I've got two license plates that bear the name of Christ, Ufa. So I've got to be careful, and so do you. I really emphasize this to the people that I'm bringing up. You can have a wonderful ministry on the platform. You can just be wonderful, but if you are not living in the fruit of the Spirit, you then your ministry is going to fall apart. It's just as simple as that. We have to be spiritual. So the greater anointing, the greater ministry, the greater uh, we should be concerned about how we live. Now, many years ago in the 70s, while Ramon and I were traveling, we had our favorite restaurant in uh, Aberdeen, South Dakota. And it was, oh my, it was ufa. It was one of, it was really great. So we would skimp during the week to save up our money so we could go and eat at this restaurant. Well, we pulled into Aberdeen, South Dakota in the 70s. I don't know if the restaurant is open anymore. I forget the name of the place. But anyways, their deal was this. You, when you ordered uh, your meal and then you got your salad, by the time you got your salad, okay, the, uh, the, the steak should be there. And by, excuse me. By the time you got done eating your salad, the steak should be there. And so if, if, if you ate your salad, okay, and the steak was not there, the meal, then you, you got it free, okay? Well, it was cool, and so we would eat our salad. And uh, we've eaten there before this incident, but it did, our steak didn't come, and it didn't come. And thank God I was a little tired, and I wasn't in a hurry. And so we waited, but we waited 20 minutes. And so the manager came, and he said, man, you know, uh, the meal is on us. You guys waited 20 minutes and didn't even yell or nothing like that. And so here's, you know, here's your meal free of charge. So I said, thank you. That's cool. But the next day was Sunday, and I was preaching at the Assemblies of God Church in Aberdeen, South Dakota, and on the second row of that church was the manager of that hotel. And I looked at him, I smiled, and I'm thinking to myself, thank you, Jesus, that the old German didn't, didn't have didn't take off and, and yell at this guy. Now, I would have every right in the world to get after him, you know, and to be, hey, you didn't, you said, right, 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 right. but thank God, thank God. And I'm thinking, how would this man receive my message today if I had yelled at him and his staff and been mean? 
I don't think that maybe he would listen very much to my sermon today. Man, so I'm saying to you today, I'm saying to Brother Hofer as well, okay? Our platform ministry, our platform lifestyle, our platform, the way we act on the platform must measure up with how we treat people and how we act when we're off the platform. And I have seen all kinds of things happen. I've seen people get off the platform, be nasty, be mean, be not nice. Thank God that's the minority. But I'm here to tell you right now, our ministry will be sustained not because of how talented you are, not because of how anointed you are, but it will be sustained if you and I have the fruit of the Spirit flowing in our lives. I can't do it by myself. I, this flesh doesn't want to love. It wants to retaliate. This flesh doesn't want to live in peace. No, mm -hmm. this flesh does, wants to have its own way, period. So I have to have a good dose of the ghost, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's what has to be on the platform as well as off the platform. So if you want your ministry, hi, Didi, to sustain, hi, Rachel, you and I must have that mentality of I'm going to be good on the platform as well as off the platform. This is why you see some ministries crumble. It's not because they're not anointed. It's not because they, they're not helping people. Their ministries crumble because they're not acting the same way on the platform as they are in off the platform. Very important that we live a lifestyle. Now, one day there was a preacher, David Wilkerson, saw a man on the airplane, and I will not say the name of the man, but this man had a big ministry. David Wilkerson watched him and saw what he was doing with another woman, walked up to him and said, you need to stop this because if you don't, your whole ministry is going to literally fall apart. And the guy laughed at David Wilkerson. The last guy you ever should laugh at is David Wilkerson. Now he's gone to be with Jesus. And that man's ministry fell apart. His ministry was awesome, okay? But the things that he did off the platform destroyed his ministry. And so I just want to let you know today, all of us, including Brother Hofer, that I must walk in the Spirit, not only on the platform, but also when we're off the platform. One last story. I had an evangelist that came, great guy, okay? Many wonderful things happened. Had him the first year, had him the second year, had him the third year. This was back in the early 80s. He came, we gave him, we got him, bought his plane ticket. He stayed at the nicest place, the Holiday Inn. I gave him $1,500 for maybe four nights. Now, $1,500 back in the 80s was a pretty nice offering. We gave it that to him the first year. We gave it to him the second year. The third year, it was $1,400 and uh, $1,450. That's what I gave him. That's what came in, okay? That's what we agreed to. Plus, took care of the plane fare, hotel, food, etc. I gave him the check. One hour later, he calls me up and reamed me out. He's screaming at me. His wife in the background is yelling and saying, you know, man, it's $50 less than what it was, you know. And I said, your brother, 
I was an evangelist for years. I never got that, you know? And boy, he's just screaming and yelling. On the platform, he was so, so nice. And boy, I really loved his ministry. But after he, you know, it was, it was bad. I was crushed. I was crushed as a, as a young pastor. And um, a month later, they split up and have never gotten back together again. You see, I've gotten offerings that <laughs> were not enough. <laughs> but you know what? God brought it in through the mail or he brought it in at the next place. I have never reamed out a minister for the offering they gave me. I've been hurt. I've said, wow, you know, a big crowd. But because I don't want to do that. So I want to share with you and I want to encourage you that your platform ministry has got to match your ministry when you get off the platform. They must be equal, okay? And uh, that's the way it is today. In the same way where you work, you know? If you're a Sunday school teacher, you're in the church, you're wonderful, but at work, you're a gossiper. At work, you yell at people, you cuss at people, you're mean to people, uh, your workers, and then, oh, we're having a special guest. Would you come, in, come into the church, you know? And they said, are you kidding me? I don't want to go to your church to act like you do. So I mean to tell you, we're in this thing 24-7, okay? 24-7. Has Brother Hofer failed? Yes. Has Brother Hofer been rude a couple times? I'm, yep. But I'm, I'm getting better than what I was 25 years ago, 30 years ago. I'm not trying to make an excuse, but we all have blown it in that area. We need to repent. And here's my line. Jesus, keep me sweet. <laughs> and the only way that Brother Hofer can remain sweet is that I've got to be baptized in the Spirit of God. Amen. I hope you learned something today. I've been real honest with you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit has used this time that will, there's been a little checklist. How am I treating people? You know, I'm a great singer. I'm a great preacher. I'm a great Sunday school teacher. I'm a great usher, you know. But away from the church, am I the same? Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.